Fellow men, we have a very special guest today, Sam Paddock. Sam was the head boy of Ronnebosch when I was in Standard 7, back in the day when Standard 7 was Standard 7 and not Grade 9. Not Grade 9. Left, not grade nine. <laughs> left, left Ronnebosch on a gap year, headed back to UCT and aced it, top of his class in business science, IS. And a few years later, ended up launching an online short course on wine appreciation, if I'm not mistaken, with the Stellenbosch University Following that, decided it was quite a good vibe and uh, got into partnership with UCT, Harvard, Oxford, MIT, through his own company called Get Smarter, which specialized in offering online short courses in partnership with legendary universities. Fast forward a few years later, and Sam exited selling Get Smarter for $103 million to a NASDAQ-listed company called To You. So we've got Sam now, five years post-exit, to talk to us about what really matters in life. Sam, you legend, thanks for joining me. John, it's great to be here. It's sad, uh, your, uh, your uh, intro reveals a far deeper relationship between us as, uh, as we've walked a road over the past few years. I'm sure uh, uh, some of that isn't available online, but it's so nice to be here and, uh, and excited to dig into this interview with you. Awesome, man. So let's just rewind a little bit to to when you're still running get smarter and i may i remember you saying on a couple of occasions i'd like to exit uh, not that you were desperate to get out but just that you you would sell it and everything and i'm curious about what you imagined would happen in your life after selling a company like that yeah so first of all to the point on um like talking about exit i think um i think we got given some good advice 10 years ago that said like you know and make sure your bags are packed. Like you don't have to, like having a deliberate exit strategy sometimes is kind of productive. Like you can't or you can't control when you will be bought. And, and there's a lot of views on whether you get bought or whether you sell. Um, and I think it's right to bang in the middle. Something is fine for one to sell, of course. But um, but so so when uh, anything that I was thinking about pre the actual um, uh, set of get spotted to to you was mainly around being responsible uh, custodian of the business, like a CEO. You, you have a responsibility to your different stakeholders. One of those stakeholders are your shareholders and of course employees, um, the partners that we had at the time. And I think um, the the way I thought about that was it's a responsible um, uh, role, it was a responsible um, act, action to consider how to, what would an exit look like in a way that would give employees longevity and, and diversity of their employment, <clears throat> meaningful, an extension of the meaningful purpose of what you're doing, return to shareholders, like strength to partners and their objectives. And so that was kind of the, the, the background thinking too. And that matter only really came up in like 2013, 14, where we started to think a little bit more about that um, as part of the role of leading the company. Um, but it was not that, and I've gone off on a tangent, which is going to happen a few more times with me. Um, I, I promise. That's one thing I can absolutely promise. Um, but uh, but you asked about um, what was it like back then? Was that the yeah? Like, how did you imagine? So so I think like a lot of people want to exit, and they have this dream of what it would look like afterwards. So I'm keen to hear what you what you thought it would be like. Well, um, I think in the you the, the the straight answer is that. I, didn't know it was the first time we were going to do that. So you're kind of treading on, on new ground there. That's not um, rare for leading businesses to kind of um, find yourself in unfamiliar territory. So I think that you know, that wasn't a problem. Um, but we didn't know. You had, of course, one takes views of what this what, what this would look like. Um, other things that I and maybe we can uh, we can explore the areas you'd like to go more deeply into, Jono. But I I feel like the, the couple of things that I that surprised me perhaps um, that I um, were as I, uh, as you sell a business, you um, you swap with one another. <clears throat> you swap control over a business that you've had and deep, intimate knowledge of that business um, for an asset that I've never had, which is cash. Um, mm. And suddenly, that means that there's new responsibilities. Like, what do you do with that? Like, and um, how do you think about managing that responsibility? And so that was the surprise that came for me. It was just, just it, it really was a, a swap of uh, one asset, control of one asset to a control of another. <clears throat> and, and that is a whole new set of skills one needs to learn around uh, the stewardship of that asset. Um, the other would be uh, my own emotional response to it. Like, well, it was a big change because actually the major change across the broader organization was actually for me and my brother. Um, um, 
who I, I, I led the business with. And, um, and, and, and actually for, for the large of other people, they still had reporting lines. They still had, they, the reporting lines ended up changing, but, um, but the major change is actually for us and not, and not, uh, and not other people. So those are two of the surprises. We could probably dig in that a little bit yeah. more, but those, those well, are the things that come to mind. Yeah, well, let's talk about money because I remember the day we actually had a coffee before you, you received the payment. And, mm. uh, and, and I was like, well, how do you feel? And so what, what did change with your money? <clears throat> so, um, yeah, there was, there was a period in our, so many transactions kind of sign and close very quickly. We had quite an extended um, um, closing period. Um, <clears throat> so a lot had, you know, a, a, we had a really good relationship with the acquirer team, um, and, the, and the leadership team there. Uh, we had started working with them. Um, and a lot of this was before the, um, the actual kind of uh, transaction took place um, as money chance. Um, so a lot of the, the day had already um, started. It wasn't a it wasn't a major change from day one to day two. But I guess the um, <clears throat> one of the lenses that I viewed the the transaction through and the the change was I was swapping a lot of uncertainty for and uh, uncertainty and potential for certainty. Um, <clears throat> so if anything, again, I was kind of optimizing for certainty through the transaction. Like it was a very uh, high growth period of time. It gets smarter. Um, <clears throat> we had uh, established relationships with uh, big international university partners and we were on planes a lot. We were um, rapidly uh, launching new and the business was tricky. Um, and there was a lot of excitement around that, but there was also So what happened when that money finally hit the bank account <clears throat> was the sense of like finally certainty arrived. And it's yeah. funny how certainty, certainty often arrives in what you can make right like, like uh, the, the measurable and the immeasurable as a lens of the world and then uh, all the the hard this easier to measure and harder to measure um <clears throat> a parts of the world and i think money uh, i think that's one of its greatest and it really touches on the um, profession of accounting and the, 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 pra the practice of accounting and, <clears throat> and numeracy generally but it gives you a very um finite way of thinking about the world and and certainly as it relates to my emotion at that stage of certainty it gave me absolutely to the certainty you suddenly have money in your account and i've never had that before so it was yeah. so, so that, that, that that's one of the ways I, i've thought about that as it happened yeah and then you spoke about your emotional response as well is that linked to the certainty yeah i think uh, yes absolutely um i think um it, it, yes it, it, there was an emotional response to the certainty i was also it was, it was, it was also a good time um, um uh, operationally, so I wasn't I wasn't deeply uncertain or unsettled future. Um, I think what it did, what, what it did was change my own. <clears throat> um, uh, it, it 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 gave me certainty of um, of financial security, um, and so that was that was probably the emotional response. There are many other emotions going on, as as I think is always the case. Um, mm. But but that was that was certainly the came from from that transaction was had an emotional response. Yeah, for sure. Mm. So you're working long hours and driving a team in this high sort of high feedback team, basically, you know, like, I mean, I remember your team meetings and the way you used to inspire everyone. And you had like a, a purpose every day, measurables, places to get to. And then all of a sudden, that's gone. What happens to your purpose or your sense of purpose in the world when that entire thing just moves out of the <clears throat> well so first of the first i think the, these things happen in stages so as we as we joined with uh, became part of uh, the acquiring company to you um the it was business as usual like we had a lot of priorities we we're very very thoughtful and deliberate and explicit about <clears throat> the priorities that the entire business took on and how those priorities related to individuals contributions and their priorities and uh, you know, john because we've had um, many conversations you'll know that i'm an enthusiastic adopter of uh, the Rockefeller habits and what has yep. subsequently become scaling up. I like about that format, that, 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 that um, framework, and it's, it's not only one, there's, there's, there's hundreds. Um, but what I like about that framework is um, that it gives you a very clear way of thinking about how your <clears throat> priorities, individual relate to the companies, um, the big priorities, which then relate to some statement of um, strategy, um, like if you will, which is seated in an understanding of one's purpose and values. And, and so the actual de facto 
purpose of the organization continued, like mm. despite um, us, despite <clears throat> the um, structure changing. Um, but then um, nine months on, when I uh, left, stepped down as CEO um, at Kitsmarter, um, <clears throat> then yes, indeed, I was handing over not just the shareholding, not the responsibility, the risks and rewards of the of the business as you do when you sell your shares, but also over the stewardship, the, the leadership of the business to others. And at that point, <clears throat> I'm no longer the leader of that purpose. I, I, I'm very proud of the fact that that purpose can continue without me um, and will be refined certainly and adopted by the new leaders and uh, as, as would be the case. But, but for me, there was, there wasn't a, um, there, that was a fairly gradual process and, and I was quite clear about um, my, the changing role, my changing role in the context of the business's purpose. <clears throat> I think the considerations that really, uh, that, 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 I, that I got right, which was, that I knew that, you know, the first thing about this a lot, we can talk about, we can talk about existential, high polluted, like quite, quite sort of um, um, high level purposes, like changing the world or leaving the world a better place, etc. They're pretty practical purposes of coming to work, like getting a salary and like, and having something to do each day. It's a, it's a purpose. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. It may, may not be this, this, um, it may not be this, this sexy, um, but it is a purpose and it's real. Yeah. And it's, if anything, it's probably more real. It's certainly more practical and more available arm's length to, to the people who one's talking to uh, a lot of the mm. time. Um, and, or, yeah, this. <clears throat> and so my one of the change was that I wasn't going to rock up at work every day at, um, at Get Smarter's offices. And so I took an office quite, quite close by to Get Smarter um, in Woodstock and had a similar rhythm that I would have adopted anyway. And it gave me a way to kind of um, trade out of it or, or, or navigate that transition period by actually still going to an office each day and having something to do and hiring an assistant and um, taking on new priorities, et cetera. So that was one of the ways I thought like, that I do think that it can be quite challenging. It might be, there may be a honeymoon period to a lot of people who make great change, no matter which change they make. But I do like the idea of, um, out and into things. Um, I don't always get it right because I'm quite intense. Um, but, um, <laughs> no, you're not. Let me say that a little, a little bit more clearly. I don't get that right often because I'm very intense. But I, yeah. um, but but I like that was one. That was one example of when I think I got that right in my, and it actually to a very practical purpose. Like we need to go. We need to work. Like like uh, I have that very strongly. We should work. Yeah. Could you talk more about that? Needing to work. Uh, I, I think we need to work. I, I, I have, I have strong views in this, and, and I don't think I'm an authority on it at all. So, so uh, it would be interesting to hear your, yours and others' views. I, um, so very personally, I need to work. Um, I need something to apply myself to. I need, I need something to, um, to rub up against. I need an obstacle to overcome. I need, um, I need to make meaning in the world. <clears throat> I need to do that with other people. Um, I need to set an example for my kids that has me making meaning in the world. And there's a couple of things that come, so that's, that, those are my personal truths. Um, I've heard that more generally amongst people too. <clears throat> I think people are best when they're at their best when they're engaged in something which is, <clears throat> and again, we go through, um, uh, we definitely go through, we definitely transient, as a, we have transient journeys as it relates to the statement, but mm. um, I think at our best when we are overcoming a meaningful obstacle <clears throat> that, is, that is towards the, our capabilities, which means we're growing um, with people around us who we value and respect and would like to be more like, um, it is more uh, to the relationship than just the uh, work, but there's actually like the, 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 there's more to the social cohesion um, um, it, with with those with those people um, and, and 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 many other things. But but those are some of the general points I make about myself and, and others. I have observed that when people don't, I, I observe I've, I've observed people not at their best when they're in in, in some meaningful um, uh, journey. And so I do think that we need to work. I, I go back to back to uh, Viktor Frankl's Man's Search for Me. He talks about meaning. And he, he's the, as, as, as some of your listeners may know, he's the author of uh, Man's Search for Meaning and, and, and the arc and the, um, the founder, the founder of the wrong word. He is the, um, he, he, he founded Logotherapy, which is the, yeah. which is the psycho, um, psychotherapy, uh, therapy, 
to um, dealing with trauma and finding meaning in the pain the tra- as a way to overcome that. And I I love his book, Man's Search for Meaning. Um, and he really, I'll paraphrase here, he talks about meaning deriving from three love and uh, and um, and I and I believe that strongly. I think you miss out on the on on ourselves in a in a in a context. I think we miss out on creating meaning in, um, mm. in the world. Sure. So I think a lot of people might disconnect. I mean, that's yeah. By the way, I'm on the same page as you with work. I think a lot of people have this longing for relief almost um like when all this hard work was and and so it's, it's interesting to hear that you did that um what what are what are some of the challenges that you have faced um in this in this time when when you when now like there isn't there isn't a need as much as an emotional need there isn't like a necessity if that makes sense um like you don't have to go and make money but you do have to go and work like how yeah what challenges have arisen and yeah. <laughs> so, I mean, in general, I think it's, uh, I, I think many people hold the belief that, you know, um, they work for, or tell themselves a story that they are, uh, and they themselves and others the same story, which is, I have to work because I have a bond to pay, because I have, um, uh, you know, a family to support. And, and while that's true, a lot of, we also make, the decisions to buy the house and to have the bond and to <clears throat> live a certain lifestyle and um, and so 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 while it's abs- I think it's two truths here the the one is that it's absolutely I think we we must work for money and it's also true that certainly not the only reason we work <clears throat> um, and um, to my prior point I think we work for meaning um, a lot of the time um, and the universal currency we use to trade and to, <clears throat> and to provide security for ourselves and our families and give us options and all sorts of things. Um, <clears throat> I, um, I mean, my own experience um, is that, uh, that and, and as I said before, I think um, the, we, I absolutely work <clears throat> for many more reasons than money, um, and money is also a good reason to work. Um, um, and so I got clear <clears throat> that given that it wasn't just about money or what was it about um, and i found with the same enthusiasm and the same hunger to perform to take on challenges to solve problems um, and um, and but but i was released from the story if you will of like yeah. i'm recruited with like no that that's mostly within our within, within our um uh within our control mostly not yeah. totally um and uh, i was watching an interesting interview a couple of days ago on 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 uh, on, on victim mentality <clears throat> and and it, there was a subtle nuance to it which was that oftentimes we think about big, uh, people who um, who who adopt a victim mentality is people who it's it's the outside world that's controlling me and everything's wrong etc but actually <clears throat> a, a lot of it is also just the stories we tell ourselves um about option and why we're in and it's subtle but it's not <clears throat> there's an element of victim in there victim's too strong a word for that but what i mean to to, to say in, in, in this point is that um the way we think about money <clears throat> need to earn it can put us in a in a tight position um and uh, again probably too strong a word but i'm using it for effect like <clears throat> i was no longer i no longer had the uh the view that I needed to, or the belief that I needed to work for that paycheck at the end of the month. I didn't, um, and absolutely still needed to work. Now, what am I working for, and why am I working mm. for it? And money is still important. Um, um, uh, and so the, the 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 so so the change, if you will, like it was more. Stuff, I think we're on this journey to understanding ourselves better to to back. Um, uh, um, to, in the plateau, to know thyself, and I think mm-hmm. I, um, and, and that gave me a chance to, to learn a little bit more myself and, and why I was working. I think I'm still on that on, on that on that discovery. I know now that I'll absolutely work for money, but I <clears throat> to earn that is, um, but I also need to work for purpose, and that must be aligned with a very clear statement of, of what I want to get involved in, what I don't, with the people mm-hmm. I want to get involved with. 
um, and, um, and to realize my potential in the world. And, um, and so it's one of those elements, whereas I think the general narrative is that money is the overriding element, but I think mm. that's a false view. And I think it's not helpful. That's not clean thinking. <clears throat> it's absolutely part of it and a necessary, important part of it, but it's not the only. And I don't think one needs, you know, if I think back to myself, I didn't need to sell a company to realize that. I could have realized mm -hmm. that by reading books and to great podcasts <laughs> and, and, and et cetera. I could, it also could be true, but it took me my own experience to do that. Whereas in the words of um, uh, Shane from Finance Street, like, you know, you really do want to be uh, learning from the, you know, uh, from, 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 from other people's experience. It's like a superpower. Mm -hmm. Would you read yeah. the document? And, and I certainly didn't before the, the, the sale. I'm um, at risk of going on too many tangents. I'm gonna... No, no, that's, but you said something interesting there where you said that for a lot of people, money is the thing or it takes up too much real estate and I think someone's focused on attention. Uh, yeah, you know, there are two directions I could go here because the one is you said in spite of having, you know, being well-resourced, you, you still had the same hunger in business knowing that the purpose wasn't for money. And I well, sorry, have to be a framing on that. It's not. It's not that it's. It's. It, this is an important. Point. I use the provocative word victim, which some people might not like. But I'm, mm -hmm. I'm, I'm, I want to push it. It's not that. <laughs> it, it, it's that I think the narrative is too strong on, uh, like the. Oh, I have to go to work for this, and like we use it as an. As a, I must go to. You know, <clears throat> I've got to put bread on the table. I got like yes, all those things are true, but a lot better understanding of self is to understand that we work that we have many purposes <clears throat> for working and uh, the the clearer we get about our individual reasons for work <clears throat> the better we're able to think um and i and i i think there's a i discovered for myself that i was too <clears throat> i kind of it was too strong for me that i needed to work for money and that missed my opportunity to <clears throat> understand that i was working for other reasons too that i could then be clear yeah. about and change so that was the, that's i wanted to make that make that point yeah yeah well that and so that's that is like the thing which is and and just so you know, like I have this with w in weight loss clients as well. So the example I'll draw is um, a woman will come into a an engagement, like a full thing, and and uh, is is absolutely desperate to hit goal weight. That's where all of their worth uh, is assigned. And in in trying to uh, in working with them, obviously we want to get them to a point where they realize that that is not that to find your worth. And they are worried about shifting that belief because they think that by letting that go, they won't be driven to lose the weight. Can you see the paradox there? So, so now I'm curious, like if money was not important to you, to take to when you're driving, um, get smarter, like a beast and you're working hard, you know, you're super focused and driven. How do you think that shift in perspective um, and meaning would have impacted your leadership and, and hunger to have a successful exit, etc. Uh, I'm, I'm, I'm not sure. Um, I have observed that uh, perhaps it would have been, um, I thought it would have been more patient. Like, I, I think, I think um, when, you know, I think it's classic, like when your back's against the wall, our back wasn't against the wall, but when you, when you find yourself in a tight spot, let's say you run out of cash, like you, you, you'll do a lot to make sure you survive, right? Like, so, I do think context changes the behavior, um, and suddenly if you flush, um, we had we had we had a good business, so uh, we weren't at risk of losing it. <clears throat> um, but what we did have was a, a strategy that um, was not, now you mentioned the universities earlier in my introduction, but we were working with very large international units, which meant that the risk had changed and that the cash requirements were going to increase as we had to kind of navigate and <clears throat> bolster ourselves up to serve these prestigious customers, <clears throat> partners. Um, in many more territories, so the risk profile changed. So, so, um, so we were absolutely more. Um, there was going to be a need to check to to resource ourselves. But the acquisition solved that extent because the acquiring company provided those resources for the risk growth. So, I it, uh, there was a, there were many good rationales for doing the um, uh, uh, for selling the business and becoming part of TU. Um, but for myself, um, I, I guess. The, the, you asked me like, what, how had my leadership changed post? Well, I've led, I've led it differently in different contexts. So I took myself out of the Get Smarter context. Um, I became an investor and board member at Yappy Chef, which is a, um, a online retailer, one of the leading, uh, what's certainly the leading online in um, kitchen and home. Um, and 
Uh, I've had a board member role there, <clears throat> uh, partnering with uh, CEOs, um, and uh, and I really enjoyed my time there. But I led differently. I wasn't leading a team. I would never have had to do that if I was leading um, time. So I had I had a new opportunity um, to lead them. That you know, I, I didn't have anyone reporting to me. Do have a chef? I was supportive of Andrew and Shane, the CEOs, but it meant that I had to lead differently, drawing on some of my experience from my journey at Get Smarter, and also. Um, uh, a way to contribute uh, to them and their journeys uh, for all of us. Um, that, that, that journey worked out really well, um, at least that I was part of, and uh, and they subsequently uh, were acquired by Mr. Price. Um, and, and so that was an interesting new journey for me and a different mm. type of leadership. Um, and then I've also spent the last um, a while leading a fitness company and, and for a period of two or four years of, of the, 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 this fitness company, Jeff, um, I led and I led differently. Like it, I did lead differently. That was also partly driven by COVID and the, the work from home um, uh, changes that took place, but but I certainly led differently. So I wouldn't say that the, the acquisition, I, I don't think it, in so far, I mean, this is, I'm kind of exploring this as mine as I go. I don't think I'd be a different person uh, and and led a lot differently, but I've um, as a result of the acquisition. But I certainly learned from it, and I incorporate those very into the next the next chapter of leadership. Leadership is a theme in my life, um, yeah. and it's important to me. And so I, I, um, I, but in general terms, I'd say that I probably lead with slightly less. Um, that's not true. I lead with a lot of. I was about to say. I was about to say I lead with a little bit more patience, but that's absolutely not true. I'm <laughs> Um, and um, and so I don't think I don't think it I don't think it changed um, a hell of a lot in terms of the way I lead. Uh, that's my very long short answer. Yeah, uh, it's interesting. Which takes me back. Hunger question is, what is it that what is that burning hunger come from? Where where does where does someone find that like um, what do I, what do I call it furnace of burning desire that drives this hunger? Where, what do you think fuels that engine for you? <clears throat> I, I, I'm still exploring this um, and will until um, I shut off this mortal coil. Um, and I, but I've got some views. Um, my, I think I had, I had a really good, I saw industrious parents at work. I saw my mom working um, uh, a really active role in rank her practice growing up. <clears throat> I saw my dad um, um, burning, you know, the, the midnight oil, working really hard on books and making a career for himself in law. So I had really good role models <clears throat> as it relates to working hard. I think I did, it, 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 um, <clears throat> insofar as I'm, I'm, I'm their child, I think that um, I had good examples of, of, I had great work ethic as an example. So <clears throat> I was driven by my understanding of the world and, 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 um, and the example they set. Um, I am very impatient to see change and to make progress. Um, I, um, I think, as I've explored, I think we all uh, in the um, as we, you and I were chatting, John, in the in the room before we started this recording. Um, you mentioned Enneagram and uh, mm. Enneagram Three, which is competitive achiever, which is me. And you know, where does the fire? Where, where like, what in what furnace like? did the desire to kind of achieve and compete or, 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 or like originate for me? I, 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 a lot of that's in our, in our early kind of, psychologists will tell us that's early, in our early trauma. I think um, and parts of when I was growing up that I really, um, um, that, 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 that I, I, I do, I want to, I, I have wanted to be liked. I have optimized for being liked. Um, and that, that is very helpful in some ways. Like um, uh, you certainly can, and you can, mm. um, uh, you, you can make friends. You can uh, you can you can um, uh, allies. You can <clears throat> all the, the, the people will follow you. Um, but all sorts of uh, trade-offs. But there's also some really like there's also, sorry not trade-offs. There's also some trade-offs to that. Um, uh, to some, but there's also trade-offs, and and it's certainly not a, a universal strategy for life. Like <clears throat> there's absolutely times when one needs to be ruthless. One needs to be clear, and <clears throat> precise, and and challenging. And uh, <clears throat> so. I um, I know that some of the, some of my desire to achieve is to be seen well in the light of you know what is arguably like a religion of the last like sixty years of entrepreneurship. Like I, yeah. I, think, I think that it's a role. It's a um, you know the word entrepreneurship is actually originates in. It's actually quite a. It's it's not a. It's a, it's a young. It's it's it, it's uses fairly recent. Um, I am I'm thoughtful on that. So, 
the dog's barking in the background, um, which is part of what's just got my attention. Um, but I'm <laughs> just shifting, shifting straight back here. Um, I, um, yeah. The, the, do you want to go and sh- do you want to go and silence the quickly? I'm going to. I, I'm actually my train of thought was taken by what they're barking at, which is which is uh, totally inappropriate. <laughs> and, and now I want to get back to the thread of thought. So, but okay. just on the on the, on the thread. Um, I think that I where's where does it burn? I'm back. I'm back on the thread. Yes. Okay, we're back. We're back. Let's go. Let's go. Perhaps it's only <laughs> as a commentary. It feels like I can deal with one thing intensely at a time. But then move back to the thread. But I'm back. I'm back. I'm back. I'm back I'm of where the, and I think it's all it's true for all of us, John. Like where do if we if we observe a certain behavior in ourselves, whether that be revealed through some psychometric analysis, for instance, Trends Finder or <clears throat> Enneagram or others. Um, like then that's a first step to discovery. That's really helpful. Like, but then can you trace it back to the roots? Like, do we know why that's there? Because that'll also be revealing and, and, and to us. Um, and so one of my answers to my kind of state as an Enneagram three or competitive achiever is that I want to be seen people. And, and that I think that entrepreneurship is kind of, it, it has become a new, um, um, uh, it, it's something that people um, uh, value. Greatly, like like good, good business people um, who can succeed and success is obviously viewed positively. Um, and so those are some of the reasons I think that that I, I certainly know that I've optimized for being um, uh, being liked. Um, but on my own journey of discovery in that, I realized that's actually not a great strategy for all occasions, and it just never is. <clears throat> it's not appropriate for some some things. And so I've had to work my up on that. Um, and but the other is <clears throat> I, I like I, I I am impatient to make impact in the world. Like I think. I'm, I'm now 41, I'm, I'm in my middle passage in my life, um, and many of your, uh, of your listeners will be in their middle passage just before, just after, <clears throat> and, um, and you kind of get a sense of your own, and I have kids, which means that you know, I'm seeing my own cycle of life play out in other little, little kids, and I see that I see, you know, there's an end to this, mm. <clears throat> and, I want, and I want to, leave, uh, you know, uh, it touches on what we want um, what, how we want to show up in the world and what impact we want to leave. And I think so. Uh, part of my my uh, my intensity uh, that I go at um, the business journeys with and uh, on and, um, and the work I do is like a, a, an impatience to have to have impact. Um, and I think that's um, I, I'm not exactly sure where that comes from, but I, but I know it's partly an understanding of the, like the limited time we have on Earth and um, and uh, and and the, the the sort of world I want to live in and how I want to contribute to shaping that world. You said, which almost sounds paradoxical, because you said you deserve to be liked, but there's totally a time to be ruthless. What what is the time to be ruthless? Um, yeah. So ruthless is a provocative word, right? Like I actually totally. saw this recently, and it's it's it, it's not unclear where the origins of the word come from. It's, uh, some people think it's it's got to do with Ruth in the Bible, um, and and I think I, I think I think it's I think it's true. But um, there is a time. So so I, I think there's many times to be to be ruthless. I I but just to see that in my own worldview for a moment. Like I want to live in a generous world. Like. <clears throat> That's, I want to live in a, in, in, a, in a largely generous and harmonious world, but I also want to live in a world driven by individual growth. And, and, and oftentimes, like, like um, being, there's a great saying, a simple saying, being nice is not always nice. Um, and there's an absolute time, and I've realized this, I kind of reached my own ceiling in leadership um, um, 10 years ago. I grew up in a very harmonious household, and, and that served us in many ways, but it certainly doesn't serve you when you need to give, like, <clears throat> candid feedback, have crucial conversations, like share with someone how, um, uh, how their behaviors impact on you negatively. Um, uh, and I'm reminded of a, of a saying that, um, that one of my mentors once shared with me, which is that relationships are not predicated on peace. They're built on the rubbing of the minds. <clears throat> and I, I love that it to me because I, because, because it is like that, that it kind of goes back, back a little bit to the to our, our conversation on the meaning of work. Like it should be a challenging journey that for me, it should be a challenging journey that we rub up against our own. Um, we kind of see the, the edges of our, um, of our, um, of, 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 of our potential. Um, yeah. and, uh, and that's far, that's at the edge. Um, and I, um, I think that we, um, 
I need to go back to the thread. Sorry, gentlemen. The, 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 You're talking about ruthlessness. So, it's, so there are times in time for conflict, and, and there generally is time for conflict. Um, um, and uh, generally speaking, there's a, the conflict is important, and it's a necessary part of building meaningful relationships. But more than that, it's a necessary part, like, like we must protect. You come into conflict, or, and it comes back to the competitive achiever. There's competition in the world, and therefore, you know, the very natural origin of that, like you fight for your share of resources. Um, the extent, the full extent of competition is that you actually slay the, the yeah. person you're competing with. Um, that doesn't fly in uh, in the dirt. No. <laughs> <laughs> um, very recently, yeah. um, very recently. So, and, and probably still does in, in some in some in some parts of the 2000s, but. My, there is absolutely a time to be ruthless, and it relates to what you value in the world and how you want to show up and leave it. I, just speaking, want to show up and, and shape a world that is generous, um, that is that is harmonious. But there's absolutely time to be <clears throat> the, the absolute opposite of those two um, things. And I think ruthlessness, especially as it relates to protecting um, one's own, protecting, my, like as a husband, protecting my wife, as a father, protecting my kids, um, uh, as a businessman protecting the business from competitors, there's a time to be ruthless. Um, and where one can be ruthless, but still observe the other values in your life um, of integrity. Um, you know, ruthless is a, is, a, is, a, is a provocative one, but, but yeah. one can still observe the other values. And it's not about, for me, it's not how do I want to show up and be ruthless? Well, I want to be, I want to be, um, um, I want to be, um, uh, I want to. I want to be ruthless. If I'm going to be ruthless, I should be ruthless with mm. How do I show up as my whole self? Um, yeah. Um, and uh, it, oh, we lost Sam for a second. And I'm back. There we go. Oh. <laughs> are, 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 are we back? We're back. Okay. Cool. So I think you know one of that that uh, stands out for me is actually in Jim uh, Jim Collins where he talks about level and he's talking about. Um, the difference between ruthlessness and rigorousness. And he, he defined a lot of that. Uh, he said that ruthless has an almost negative to it because it sounds like, um, you know, cutting heads off and uh, burning people at the stake, whereas rigorous is, has the same positive attributes, but negative. Anyway, but, but I like ruthless. It's, it's slightly more, pro as you said, provocative. It, um, it raises some question marks. I dig it. So, Look, we're out of time, and there's there are two things I wanted to touch on, um, and hopefully we can get through both. But the one is, you said once that there was like a t in your life, and I know that the Gazelles framework or scaling up, they all had a, a role to play. But you said that someone suggested to you that you're a personal manifesto. Yes, do you remember that? And I do. And that, and you said that shaped like so much of your life. I'm curious about what that experience or what what is the personal manifesto, and then how's now if we got time. We do have time. Just after I close my window in my basement <laughs> park. <laughs> All right. Um, John, the, the for me was um, uh, a statement. It, 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 is, it is a statement of self. It's a statement of one's intent to be a certain person. And I think it. it, it it does a few things. One, writing the power of the written word is like it's just I, I hadn't. I think for so long in my professional career, um, a lot of the thinking that was being done was being done in like the corridors between myself and my parents who I was working with, or myself and my brother who I was working with, or the executives I was working with, and um, and that gets you so far. But there's real power in writing something down, and in the same way to take back to. At least in the same energy as we spoke about, as it relates to like the the measurable and the immeasurable, like the numbers and no numbers and we reference that in relation to, to money and cash, um, and what that did for our emotional state for security. Um, um, it's also something about the written word. It's like it's it's accountable. If you write it down, I can actually hold it up. I can reference it back, and I can and I can hold myself accountable to it. But it's also it's like once it's written down, I can review it and I can share it with other people and I can get their input and their consult and their consults. Um, and I guess so. There's and those are just two examples of the power of the written word. But I, but like writing, there couldn't be something more important than than asking ourselves who we are, writing that down, getting other people's contribution. I mean, if I'm really interested in who I am, if I if I just talk tell people about it, the words kind of like 
you know, they're between me and you. And then say, and did I say that? And um, what's the what's the benefit? And, and as they leave my mouth, they're not part of my world that I can um, with others. And certainly can't come back to it kind of in, in three months' time and say, how am I doing relating to it? So, so I mean, I, I think I'm overdoing the simplicity on this, but but the point is that putting down a personal manifesto is a accountable um, intellectual act of um, of reviewing oneself, of really taking it seriously. And I think that's what that um, that that time in my life represented was um, becoming a lot more disciplined and a lot more focused. So those are, my, those are my two words for growth back then. Those are the two areas I wanted to improve on: discipline, improve discipline, and improve focus. Um, and all that just. A, better thinker really overall yeah. i think the, the the personal manifesto was a start that then spread to become um you know once i've written down who i wanted to be and and shared it with my wife and friends and asked them their views and and then would go back to it regularly to review myself the same energy the same thing took place you know we write on a strategy we didn't write one down we didn't have it written down anyway actually wow. but we certainly were doing as best as, best as we could do because we, we, how are we getting the best thinking from our executives? How are we doing the best thinking ourselves about reviewing it and assessing it regularly? So we wrote down our one-page strategy, which is really like a, a personal manifesto for a business, you know? <clears throat> and then it applies more broadly to talking about one of the things I have on my wall. This is very geeky, and but I, like, I have a statement of, of, of our world, like in an onion. <clears throat> like who's the center of our family? Who are our friends? Who's our family? Where are we at with them? What are the different method what are the different vehicles we use in our um in in our in our world be it business be it um be our home be it our support systems etc all there because i can then think about it with my wife and we can talk about our dogs, for example very important yes very yeah important. yeah from a show that they're roaming free on the property and now coming out uh, to my office as part of the, as part of this interview uh, and they are on that it's clear um, i'm doing That's my best to integrate what is otherwise a total faux pas into uh, uh, what is a perfectly um, a cool interview Back no, that's uh, well. I mean, on that on that note, it has been a super cool interview, and um, I know that you're like the busiest retired guy I've ever met. So, <laughs> so yeah, far from far from, yeah, far from, far from retired. retired. <clears throat> yeah, far I really, retired. yeah, I really appreciate you taking the time to chat, and um, I think the personal fest manifesto is a spectacular place to end. So, Sam, you've been a legend. Thank you very Thank much. Thank you, John. Pleasure. I was just going to say, I'm increasingly excited about the um, the the work you've been doing. Uh, you and I walked a road um, <clears throat> as friends um, um, uh, over the past uh, decade, and I um, and I uh, I'm really excited about the work you're doing. How are you bringing more of who you are, Jonah Proud, for front and center into the world? Like so much to offer. Um, I know it. I know it manifests so beautifully in your role <clears throat> as uh, in coaching. I know in nutrition specifically, but I think more broadly. So you were talking about earlier about coaching the whole human in your example you weren't talking this is just about the diet um, example of the the woman you were coaching you were talking about her belief of herself and her her worldview and i think that certainly for me i like one of the reasons i don't do a lot of interviews it's not it's not part of my um objectives right now i change right now but when you asked i was like yeah of course it's China. and i believe so strongly in what you're doing um, and how you do it that i that i'm that i'm here like and and and, and very happy to support in whatever way but part of that is also strongly with my view of the world, uh, my, my objectives in the world of improving like self-esteem in the world, and I think you do that so beautifully well through the work you're doing. I think you're putting that stereotype with, with, with the new approach you're taking. I know you, uh, um, and and I just wanted to say thank you. Um, great to be part of your platform, um, and uh, and excited about watching um, you from the sidelines in the next couple of months. Yeah, thanks so much for saying that, Sam. Yeah, and thanks again. I really appreciate it. All the best, man. Great to join you.